Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about two things. One is setting up Siri so that you can allow a visually impaired or totally blind user to access their phone. And then secondly, I'm gonna talk about voiceover. So those are two ways that a blind person, that's totally blind especially, can access their device. In this video, I'm going to include in the description box of this video, a four part series on how to use Siri commands to use your phone or to operate your phone. So those commands will help with learning how to make phone calls, how to check text messages, how to send text messages, etc. So make sure to check that out in the description box. But the first, first steps before I get deep into the video is that you want to make sure that under settings, the user has already put their voice in and read off the commands to Siri so that they can activate it. That way they can use it hands-free. But if not, you can always, if you have a home button on your phone like this one, you can press and hold it for two seconds and it will pop up. So you'll see a little circle pop up there for Siri. And the visually impaired user probably wouldn't know that it's on unless they feel the haptic feedback. But if they're using a device that doesn't have a home button and they set up S-I-R-I, I don't want to say the name, <laughs> they can press um, the side button here. For example, you can say, hey Siri, text 13 uh -huh. mini. What do you want to say? Hey there, I'm just practicing my gestures. We'll talk later. It says, hey there, I'm just practicing my gestures. We'll talk later. Do you want to send it or change it? Send it. Done. So that gives you an idea of how that works. So stay tuned for the rest of the video and you'll learn more. So here are a few things to keep in mind when you're setting up an iPhone for a totally blind person. So what you want to do is go under settings. So here is the settings icon. We're going to tap on that and we're going to set up Siri first. So you're going to go down to where it says Siri and search and we're going to click on where it says listen for, I got to say S-I-R-I because it's going to keep going off. S-I-R-I or Hey S-I-R-I. So for here, I checked both S-I-R-I or Hey S-I-R-I. You could just do this one prompt, but either way, if the person says S-I-R-I or if they say Hey S-I-R-I, so Siri or Hey Siri, then that's when the phone will start listening for commands. So make sure that's checked. And then for this phone, we have a home button. So you can activate press home for Siri. So I have that already on, but if it's not on, make sure to turn it on. Also allow Siri when locked to make sure that's on. So the person doesn't have to unlock the phone to use Siri. They can just do it, um, you know, while the phone is locked. All right. And that's helpful if the phone is not far from them. They need to do a command to find the phone or if they have an emergency and they need for Siri to call someone, that will be helpful so they don't have to have the phone in their hand. Um, you can change the voice of Siri. So for here, I have Variety American and I chose voice three. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. You can change it to any voice. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. All right. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. I just use voice three because I just like how it sounds. Um, after that, go back to the settings here under Siri and search, and we're going to tap on Siri responses. Make sure prefer spoken responses is checked off. So make sure that's always checked. Um, these two probably won't be as helpful for a totally blind person, but prefer spoken responses is key. Um, those other two we really don't need if they're totally blind. Now, call hang up. Make sure to toggle that on so it's on for me. When you tap the toggle button and it's green, that means it's on. Uh, but if yours looks gray, make sure to turn it on. That way, 
when they're on a phone call, instead of trying to find buttons to hang up, they can say, hey, Siri, hang up. Huh? Okay. Next, announce calls. I'm going to tap on that. Um, you can do always. So that's helpful if the totally blind person doesn't mind having all of their phone calls announced. Um, I had it on headphones only, but I'll put it on always so you all can see how the settings go. Next, we have announce notifications. So that should be turned on again. So make sure that's toggled on so it's green. And that is where Siri is going to read out all your notifications, including um, text messages and emails, etc., whatever you set up. Um, it says announce when connected to headphones. So if the person is, person is using headphones, they could do that. CarPlay if they're, well, they won't be driving. But for me, you know, if I'm using the phone while I'm driving, I can have it announced through my radio. Reply without confirmation. I usually turn this off because if they're trying to um, text somebody and they are going back and forth, and they mess up what they're saying. You don't want it to just send the messed up version of the message. You want uh, the phone to ask them before they send it. Okay. Um, then announce notifications from. You have different options for this. I have my calendar turned on because I use my calendar. But if we go through and, for example, if they have emails, toggle on announce notifications. That means... Whenever they get an email, it will be announced. This one here is very um, important too, messages. So tap on messages, make sure to toggle on announce notifications for that, and then go to all notifications. Make sure all notifications is checked. For phone, announce notifications. That'll let you know when someone is calling. And let's go back. Another good one to turn on. I think that's it. It depends on the apps because this phone only has so many apps. So for these um, areas, and you might have additional areas um, that you want to have a notifications announced for, make sure to toggle those things on as necessary. My information, you can touch that. I'm not going to touch mine right now, but if you go into this setting, you'll be able to, you know, put a name and address in there. That's helpful for when they're using Siri and they're out and about and they want to, you know, personalize their address and things like that. So that's optional, but it is helpful. And this Siri and dictation history, deleting it, I don't think it matters, <laughs> but let's go to messaging. With Siri, again, make sure that automatically send messages is toggled off because you do not want them to just send random messages. Even if it's a mistake, you don't want it to be sent to someone. Okay, let's keep going down the list. So you can see some of the settings I have, you know, kind of set up here. These are totally optional. I'm sorry. Uh, suggestions from Apple and all that. Um, totally optional. Let's see if I turn this on. It shows learn from app. So this just basically will help the phone to make additional uh, suggestions when using Siri. So use with act, ask Siri. So you can go eat under each app that's being used and you could turn this on if you'd like to have Siri um, utilize those features. So let me go back, go to another one here. Let's go to messages and I have everything turned on because this will train Siri as to what is important for the user. All right. So that's step one. If Siri isn't already set up for the user, make sure to set it up. So if their voice commands are needed. So for example, when you, this has already been set up with Siri but just say it's a brand new device and the person has not set up a uh, Siri activation, make sure to do that. Again, it depends on the user, but under settings and Siri and search, if you have not set it up, that means train Siri on your voice. It's gonna ask you for a few commands. 
the user has to repeat those commands to set Siri up initially. They only have to do it the first time. And then from there, they'll be able to use their own personal voice. Otherwise, you can have the, if it's for a phone with the home button, you can press and hold it for a few seconds and it will activate Siri. So even if you don't train it for just listening without pressing the button, then the user can always press the home button. I'll say the user has a phone without a home button, one of the newer phones, then they would use the side button on the right to press to activate Siri. So one, two, three, and the Siri would start. Next tip, if the user would like to activate additional settings with their iPhone, all they have to do is go again under settings and then accessibility. And there is a function called voiceover. So when you tap on it, voiceover is going to allow the phone to read everything that the person swipes, okay? So if I turn it on. Voiceover on, settings, accessibility, back button. Now, when they swipe and tap, that's how they activate the phone or they navigate the phone. So for example, take one finger. Voiceover, heading. Voiceover, switch button, on. Voiceover speaks items on the screen. Tap once to select an item. Double tap to activate the selected item. All right, so you would have to swipe using one finger. Learn more, link. Two fingers, three Double fingers. Double tap to activate link. One finger, two fingers, three fingers. It just depends on what it um, calls for. But here, voiceover practice. Button. This is called voiceover practice. This is where you can practice the gestures. If you double tap, see there's a highlighted box around it. But voiceover practice heading. Okay. Practice voiceover gestures, commands, and typing in this area. Select the done button in the top right corner and double tap to exit. So you can swipe once. One finger swipe down. Next rotor item. One finger swipe right. Move to next item. Use three fingers. Three finger swipe right. Scroll left. So it'll tell you whatever uh, the gesture means when you're in this practice mode. Done. Button. Done. Vo voice over speaks item. Voice over. Switch button. On. Now. Double tap to toggle setting. If you get stuck using voiceover and you want to turn it off and you have a phone with a home button, you can press it one, two, three. Turn off voiceover. And it turns it off. Turn on voiceover. Okay. Voiceover is now on. Turn off voiceover. Now, if your device is running iOS 18, which is a newer version, um, and it doesn't matter the phone type, you can have an older phone, but newer software. So you have to go under, um, settings and then general, and then you can get the software update. They have another feature called voiceover tutorial on iOS 18 version. Voiceover on settings, accessibility, back button, sign, collections page, learn how to use voiceover. Learn introductory voiceover interaction gestures button. So you would start from the beginning, double tap. Select the next item. Voiceover automatically reads aloud the selected on-screen item. Swipe one finger from left to right now to move to the next page. All right, so. Continue. But that is what I recommend as far as setting up an iPhone for a blind user who is brand new to iPhone. The first step, again, using Siri commands. Second step, which is a little bit more learning or more of a learning curve, is to use voiceover so they can navigate the phone. So to start out, I do have a playlist and some videos I will link in the description part of this video that is a four-part series of how to use voiceover to activate your device or to, to access your device and to activate different uh, settings. So to make phone calls, to text people, to check voicemail, to check your email, to go on YouTube, et, et cetera. So uh, make sure to watch those. So to recap, first thing for a totally blind user to do is to make sure to go under settings 
and set up Siri. So you're gonna do that by going settings and then Siri and search. If you're setting it up for the first time, if not, then you should already have access to the settings, but make sure the settings are set the way you want them per app as well as per the device. And then after you do that, then you can move on to learning the different voice commands. So once you learn those, that will help you to gain basic access to the device. And then from there, if you're brave enough, you can go to accessibility and then try that voiceover tutorial that we talked about in this video. So again, I highly recommend you go under settings then go to Siri and search, make sure Siri, uh, Siri is set up. After that, listen to my tutorial that tells you how to use or teaches you how to use the different gestures for different purposes. And then after that, if you want to learn how to navigate the phone using finger swipe gestures, you can do that by using uh, voiceover and get trained on your own. One last thing I want to share with you is this Hable device. So this is a remote control that you can buy online and it is for using the voiceover gestures that I just showed you. And if you are having a hard time learning how to swipe using the phone, this is about $200 online. I know it's kind of expensive, but it is helpful. And it's just basic buttons that when you press them, they will help you to navigate the phone, okay? So it uses Bluetooth and this will, one button, it depends on how it's set up or how you're holding it, but one button helps to go forward with swiping with the app. So all you have to do is press that button and then one will help you to go back and the rest of them are programmed for different functions. So this is the Hable device. You can find it on I am Hable. This is the Hable Easy and again, this is good for senior citizens or people that are um, new to the iPhone and swipe gestures.